Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about geometric operations, which is a type of question for measurement and data. We're going to be taking a look at angles in triangles for this particular video. So to begin, let's take a close look at what you can typically find in triangle angle questions. So for these types of questions, the angle properties of triangles, as well as any formula relating to that of triangles, is useful when working out the solution. Knowledge of the types of triangles is also required. We also need to know that the angles in a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. More complex questions may require us to deconstruct various shapes into triangles to, or to answer the question. Okay, so angles and triangles is kind of like an extension to the angles topic. It uses most of the information from there, but we also have some additional special properties concerning triangles. So triangles are a bit funny because they... Um, all of the internal angles of a triangle will always 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 add up to 180 degrees and I can qu very quickly show you why. So for example we've got two parallel lines here and we can draw any type of triangle we want within these two lines. So let's draw a bit of a funny one like uh, maybe like this. So then in this triangle we've got three angles. We've got angle A, we've got angle B and we've got angle C. So because this triangle has been drawn on these imaginary parallel lines, we know that for parallel lines, alternate angles are actually going to be the same. So that means this angle right here is also angle A since these angles are alternate. And with that same theory, these two angles are also alternate. So this angle is uh, angle C as well. So we can quickly see that when you add angles A, B and C together, you get a straight line, which of course has 180 degrees in it. So that's how you can very easily understand how angles and triangles always have to add up to 180. And that's possibly one of the easiest um, things that these questions will try to get you to to figure out and use to figure out the answer. Now, other things that we need to make note of are going to most likely be these three triangles. These other ones don't really um, impact questions that much. So it's better to focus on these three types. So equilateral triangles are one type of triangle. And we can see that in the diagram, three all three sides of the shape are actually equal, kind of like a square. And the other point about equilateral triangles is the fact that all three angles are equal as well. So because of the fact that a triangle has to have 180 degrees for its internal angle sum. That means that since all of these are equal, they're always going to equal 60 degrees as that is 180 divided by three. As for right angle triangles, these refer to triangles that have this little right angle in one of its three corners. So that would be one thing to note for. And the final thing is the isosceles triangle. So for isosceles triangle, we can see that only two of the sides are equal. So two sides equal and two angles are equal. And it's not just any two angles, but the two base angles are going to be the same. And we can see it's on the bottom of this triangle. So those mean that uh, these two angles are always going to be the same. So they help you figure out the answer. Even if you only know one out of the three angles in the question, you can use the fact that they always add up to 180 to figure out the other two sides. Now, one more thing that the description made note of was the fact that triangles can be utilized to construct more difficult shapes. So for example, if we take a look at a hexagon, 
we can tell that it's going to be composed of multiple triangles or a quadrilateral sorry that's not a quadrilateral quadrilateral means there's four sides so we can break most shapes up into triangles and since we know that each triangle has an internal angle of 180 then a quadrilateral will have since it's composed of two triangles these quadrilaterals will have an angle sum of 360 degrees and you can use that kind of knowledge to figure out how the angle sum of more complicated shapes let's see if we can put them into practice by tackling this example question over here we see that angle y is half of angle x. What is the value of y? So we see the two mystery values here. Okay, so these types of questions generally have multiple ways of solving them. So try and get used to the different rules for these types of geometry questions. So know your alternate angles, your correspondent angles, complementary angles and supplementary angles will all, all of those knowledges will help you answer these questions. So let me see. We see in the question that this angle is 90 degrees as indicated by the square symbol and we are told that this large angle here is 66 degrees. Now straight away we can see over here we've got this triangle and we have two of the sides actually sorry the angles known. So since we know that all three of them have to always add up to 180 degrees that allows us to figure out what angle Y is. So if angle sum of a triangle has to equal 180 degrees then y plus 81 plus 75 has to equal 180 degrees so that allows us to figure out what y is and that results into this number sentence and that should then simplify to it being 24 degrees now we're told that x is actually half of this angle sorry y is actually half of angle x and we know what y is, so we can replace the y with 24 degrees. We can see that x is going to equal 48 degrees. Now, we also talked about how there can be various ways in which we can answer this question. Without using this information, we can see that the overall shape is a quadrilateral. There are four points and four sides. So that means the angle sum of the entire quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees, since we can very clearly see it's composed of two triangles, each of them um, providing 180 degrees each. So that means uh, alternatively, we can figure out what angle X is first. So if angle sum, whoops, if angle sum of quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees, then we can tell that we can add all the angles together. So we are told this large angle is 66 degrees, this angle is 90 degrees, this angle together is going to be x plus 81 degrees, and this is going to be 75 degrees. So the number sentence would read 66 plus 90 plus x plus 81 plus 75 is equal to 360. So that allows us to find that x is equal to 48 degrees, then we can tell what y is since y is half of angle x and that gives us 24 degrees as well. So that would be the answer again a 24 degrees. So that would be all of the tips and tricks I've got for you for angles and triangles questions. Hopefully this video is of some help to you in the future.